Thank you very much indeed uh, to the uh, previous respondents. I've got to say, I'm, I'm not sure I had quite as much coffee uh, as uh, Dan, and Steve, uh, they, they, uh, Dan and Ollie, who I think treated this more like a therapy session. Um, so hopefully it'll give you a bit of a, a brief uh, overview of, of what we do at Raymarine. Raymarine is a uh, commercial electronics uh, company for the commercial boating, um, sorry, recreational boating market. So if you go down to the marina, go down to Ocean Village, and if you have a look up the mast, you'll see what sort of radars they've got on it. You may see a few with um, Ray Marine on it. Um, we sell to the individual user and to OEMs such as Beneteau, who make loads of yachts and put our kit on it. So we've got a, a slightly different customer base, really, to the previous two um, presenters. Uh, we were bought by Fleur, which is an American company dealing with uh, IR cameras um, in 2010, who um, saw uh, they, they um, make very large, very expensive cameras, which they put onto cruise ships. And they saw um, our acquisition as a way of maybe penetrating their products into a more uh, consumer market space. Uh, we've got about 300 people worldwide. There's about 150 people at our HQ in Fairham. Um, split amongst sales, marketing, uh, mechanical design, PCB electronics, and software. There are probably about 25 to 30 software engineers on site. Um, we design all the kit from start to end, hardware, mechanical, software, in the UK. It's manufactured in uh, the Far East and Hungary. Um, but we're pretty much like Apple, we're a turnkey solution, really. Um, just to show you the sort of thing we do, we release software for the, our main product, the uh, multifunctional display, the chart plotter, um, every three months to the public. And these are sort of features which our um, product managers come up with and think they're a great idea to put into the boat. So let's just see if this works. By the power of technology. Superb. Yeah. Just trying to persuade uh, the laptop to. There. Oh, fantastic. Uh, uh, well, no sound on this one because, uh, for instance, my laptop has decided that uh, sound is not an important thing to respond to this button. What Jim's doing here, this is a, an MFD that we've got. This is the sort of typical thing all people have on a boat. Uh, and what he's showing off here actually is drone control. We uh, are in partnership with uh, DJI uh, drones, um, who've got an API. And uh, we've uh, incorporated that into the software that's uh, in, in this release has just gone out a few weeks back. Uh, we think that's a really great pr uh, product because one of the uh, markets we sell into is the commercial uh, fishing market in Florida. Um, and what people will do is they will get their nice boats, uh, they will go out for about an hour into the middle of the Gulf and fish for tuna. Uh, one of the great things that your customers that you take out on these boats, they want to see a video of them catching a large, large tuna. So we have um, integrated control to the drone, which will press a button, it will scoot around to the back of the boat, it will follow you as you're driving along and uh, take a video of you on the back. Um, it's just one of those features which our product managers will come up with and think, oh, this is a really great feature, let's build that in. And the software engineer is going, you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> We've got so much to do. You're joking. So uh, well, they'll find an engineer and say, look, there's a drone, there's the API, can you go and see if you can build it into it? Yeah, sure enough. So <laughs> it's a... It's a fun market. When I joined um, Raymarine, I had the choice of joining IBM or Raymarine. And uh, my mate who worked there said, it's, it's fun kit for boats. What are you going to do? I'm like, yeah, good point. So um, how much software? It's, it's all embedded stuff. We have over 200 products on, on, the, uh, uh, on our uh, sales list at the moment, um, from little things like network trans uh, translators um, to uh, keypads which you plug into it, put somewhere nice on the console which will control the, uh, all the electronics on it, um, 
to the MFDs, which have over two million lines of code in them uh, from the um, uh, OS, which was Linux, um, up to the middleware, to the presentation and, and UI. Um, it's a lot of code, a lot of it was legacy. It's been rewritten twice in the last 10 years. Um, we were taken over by Fleur, who said, oh, we love what you do, but that unit's rubbish. I wanted to completely redesign it. Um, so we uh, built up on a, a new Linux, Linux platform, rewrote the entire code, just threw it away, and started that again. And we had to do it in 18 months. Um, and it nearly broke everybody. Uh, we also decided to transfer to Agile. Um, yeah. <laughs> CI was the only way to make it work. Absolutely was the only way to make it work. I'll touch on that later. Um, we have so many different products over so many different platforms. So we've uh, basically boiled down the number of platforms we support over the uh, last five years. Uh, and it's mainly Linux. So we've transferred to Android. Uh, in the last 18 months um, and yeah it's so easy to get the electronics out of China and they'll all produce the platform for you I don't know if anybody's ever tried to get a, a supported Linux on their embedded system before um, but a company would normally charge you a massive amount of money for it and right now with Android uh, the Chinese manufacturers will quite happily hack it uh, give you all the drivers, um, just as long as you, you buy their platform off them. Uh, so why CI? Uh, oh, when I first joined the company, it was, it was the luxury of the, the, the software dream where you would have loads of engineers uh, tasked to develop a feature. Oh, hey, jolly good. How are you getting on with that? Oh, yeah, another few days, nearly have it done. Oh, how are you getting on with that? Yeah, jolly good. N nearly got it done. I oh, got it done. And then you get the build manager who would then be... Uh, get all these built, uh, these uh, assets, have to build them together uh, to produce an integrated build, which we then give on to the test people. Uh, when I joined the company, I uh, talked to one of the stress build engineers who said, oh, brilliant, uh, I'm glad you've come here to take over this job because I'm here till Friday night, uh, 10 o'clock, maybe 11, just trying to get this stuff going because, I mean, everybody goes off, tells me it's done, and it goes off home. Uh, and I'm here trying to get the, get the bill going. I'm so glad you're going to take that over from me. I said, I'm never doing that. <laughs> I'm never doing that. Um, so uh, I went about hacking together a system which would take everybody's uh, individual commit and integrate it automatically. Um, yes, yeah, so with that, basically got rid of the uh, weekly build. Um, oh, yeah. Bit of a therapy session for me, maybe. Um, so... Another problem we had is over so many different products, it, build, building was, it was golden knowledge. Uh, people have touched on uh, how you would build the uh, Jenkins scripts into Jenkins, the build scripts into Jenkins, and Charlie goes, oh my God, my server's gone down. Or um, when we've, we've played with Jenkins, um, people say, oh, it's fantastic, I love Jenkins, running on my build system. I go, oh, every time I do a commit, I say, oh, it's fantastic. Great, okay, uh, have you got there how you, how you build your software? Oh uh, yeah, it's all in Jenkins. Uh, it's like, all oh, right, how, how am I gonna do that? Because I'm not using Jenkins. How do I give that to someone else? Because they're not using Jenkins. So um, uh, we took the uh, pragmatic approach, I think, which people have touched on here, of actually uh, embedding the build script in each uh, everybody's repos. Um, so it's under CI control, um, it's called auto build, and you run auto build, and it'll build it all for you. And we're moving to Docker. Uh, which has just happened actually, uh, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, build failure is only surface integration time. Certainly, the, yeah, the weekly build that was when the, uh, when uh, they um, really showed up. Uh, integration nightmare. Absolutely, uh, someone would do a feature, it would knock out the performance, uh, or something else would stop working. Um, so uh, yeah, you can't have that sort of uh, feedback weekly or bi-weekly. Uh, progress completely misreported. Absolutely, a developer would say that they've done something. No, they haven't. No, they've poorly implemented it or half fast finished it, uh, and it just wasn't visible. Uh, delayed testing. Oh, my God, that we, got, we have a test boat, and we have uh, 20 test engineers, and they go out and they test this kit for hours on end out in the Solent. Um, and if you delay, they, they should go out in a boat. And if that Tesco is not ready, you're uh, pushing the departure of that boat with a Tesco and you're knocking everything down. Maybe you're, you're delaying um, one product on there, but there's 20 products they're trying to test. So you've really got to get that code out on time. Um, 
which is where CI really comes into delivering that stuff. Um, Jeopardising product launches, absolutely. You delay testing, you delay your time to market, you delay sales, it just, yeah, CI is vital to making us a more efficient company. Uh, yeah, the, the, um, the, the management one, I don't know how the software was getting on. How are you getting on? Oh, you really well, yeah, yeah, it's a great feature. Uh, software team, one to know who broke the build, absolutely. Um, CI absolutely gives you this minute by minute. When I first deployed it and published all the results um, publicly, all the management can suddenly see, okay, how Ted, has Ted, Ted finished that thing? Oh, he tells me to done it. Well, let's have a look at the build system. Yeah, there he is. There's the, uh, there's a thing, that's where it actually breaks, and that's where the tests fail. So, uh, Ted hasn't really done it. So, they go around and say, oh, Ted, I see from the build page that uh, you haven't done it. Uh, Ted's, what, what build page? This one here. Oh. Um, I thought developers would hate it. I thought they would hate having this publicly um, displayed. They loved it, absolutely loved it. And uh, the management loved it, they can see the progress. Developers loved it because they can see how they're getting on. If they could commit something, see the build pass, see the test pass, and when they came and said, I'm gonna go, go home now. Um, uh, I wanna get home to see my kids. Uh, the manager said, if, you, if you've done this thing, absolutely, look at the build page, all done. So yeah, real buy-in from both sides uh, of, of the team. Um, clean builds on, on PC. I mean, all this stuff is just old hat now. But when we started doing it 10, 12 years ago, it was brand new. The idea of a developer saying, it works absolutely fine, I built it on my system, look at it working, fantastic. Jolly good. Give it to the guy doing the integration. Doesn't work. Because they're, they're not doing clean build. So, clean build on every commit. Uh, we've got host testing um, and we've got target testing. Uh, we work with embedded systems um, and it is very difficult to get configurations which reflect what actually happens in real life. Uh, Dan, you talk about test stands um, which you can configure to reflect uh, customer configurations. I think you, you touched on Kubernetes and your Docker systems. Um, when it comes to Boats, customers can have three radars, they can have two screens, they can have a fish finder, they can have so many different uh, bits of kit. It's very difficult, it's impossible to reflect every possible configuration. So we have um, invested in test stands for ourselves where we have uh, a couple of displays, we have um, some fake radars spinning around with um, gathering some, uh, some data, we have uh, depth sounders, so we have different rigs reflecting different typical customer configurations and you can choose to run tests, your software or the latest um, uh, builds on any one of those configurations. We have a separate software test team which is responsible for ensuring the integrity of the software. We have an integrated quality assurance team, the ones with the boat, who take the outputs from that, which have been passed by the software test team, and actually do the um, systems testing, really. So, what I've got to come to, um, what should we do, really? I'm gonna keep this quick, actually, and go for the, um, our experience, really. Um, we tried to start the code analysis, didn't really pay off. Um, we invested quite a lot of money in it. We took teams out of developing products we needed to do uh, uh, to learn how to do um, static analysis, uh, to uh, filter all the results, try to get some useful out, uh, information out of it. Not worth doing it. Not for us. Uh, the code's too big. Um, the uh, amount of change is too high. Uh, and we uh, have uh, instant peer reviews. Um, we have really good testing, and that gives us the same level of, uh, of uh, quality we, re we really needed. Um, Squish, it's a Qt test library. We use Qt for uh, the UI on all our products. 
um, and it allows us to automate and embed um, tests uh, which will run on the host uh, exactly the same way as, uh, as they will on the uh, embedded uh, hardware. Um, software testing, fresh grads, oh, love them. Um, we have uh, software engineers who are doing uh, in year in industry. We uh, give opportunities to um, people who are fresh out of college, uh, bring them into testing. Um, they bring such energy and knowledge about all the latest tools and latest processes. Fantastic, and they're cheap. Um, but really, really superb. Where we need expertise and um, a deep level of understanding of, of software in the uh, software team, uh, we need fresher ideas and ability to learn and be dynamic um, in the software test team. And we've had people go from software test into the developer pool as well. Um, adaptivist test, test management. We use JIRA um, and it Latin tool chain extensively. Um, and we use adaptivist test management in JIRA for uh, the uh, creating test plans, test cases, um, running test plans um, automatically on the hardware um, and uploading test results into uh, into Jira. So that integrates with the Jenkins system. Yeah, it could do. Yeah, we we don't, we don't use Jenkins, but yeah, uh, yeah, um, uh, Jira plugs into to Jenkins seamlessly. Yeah. And adaptive yeah. this will you'll be able to trigger because you said about triggering test runs. Yes. Yeah, um, we we uh, trigger the test runs um, uh, automatically. We get the test plans out of uh, Adaptivist, um, run the tests, upload the results into the test records, um, we, we can see the coverage. So, yeah, really, really good plugin. Uh, out of all the test plugins we've seen in Jira, it's, it's yeah, it's really good. Um, we also do requ uh, requirements management in Jira, so we see the traceability between uh, requirements through into tasks, which the developers do for the software, uh, through the tests. So. Uh, we use outsource as well. We use people in Romania, people in um, Germany, France, yeah, everywhere. Uh, or we pull them into our test teams. Uh, really, really good. So uh, that's about it, I think. Yeah, lunch. Or, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Can you just flip back to your challenges so I can? Duh. Oh, yeah, okay. You did see that one. Um, when we first started at CI was immature, uh, yeah. Um, IBM had solutions for, for continuous integration. Uh, I think uh, people who do Clearcase uh, had solutions. Oh man, the cost, the cost of the tools from IBM. Oh, oh. We, as soon as we could, we kicked it out of the door and got Git in. Um, and uh, we homebrewed it all. Had a look at um, Jenkins or its previous income up was, was it Clear? Hudson. Uh, Hudson and for that it was Cruise Control or something. Um, information was poor, really difficult to, to um, get together. Stack Overflow wasn't really, wasn't it? It's all pomp. Um, and uh, plugins, absolutely plugins. Yeah, oh, we're using a great plugin, fantastic. Is it supported? No, uh, maintained. Oh my God, we use it. Nightmare. So we've got an internal um, bespoke system. I wrote it. Um, it's uh, run off Git triggers, uh, a few Python scripts and uh, uh, a mice, uh, MSQL uh, database behind it all uh, to do the uh, artifact management and metadata. Um, we also needed a system for builds which was product centric. We have over 200 products. Uh, we need to be able to go back and build software for a product that was seven years ago as much as we do for products of today. Um, we, uh, Want, I wanted a system where anybody in the company could go and say, okay, I've got an autopilot. Uh, I want to run version 3. Where's all the product uh, version 3 software? So they've got a web page. They can go and find, click on the product, click on the version of it. Um, it's also um, grouped by product family as well. So, but it's a simple, simple system. And it's not software repository um, centric, which so many of these other systems are. So um, we have platforms, we have 
components and, and they're all the commonalities by the, by the product. So um, that's why we have our homebrew system. Um, ah, people left, yeah. When we got rid of the build manager system, uh, build manager role, people left because they love the status of it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, I still can't get over that today. Um, they didn't like the idea of just being a developer. But of course, that's, that's, that's the thing you're supposed to be. So French, who wants to do build management? You either get into management or you want to be the best developer you can you know, and work together. Um, so yeah, when we found that, um, that developers could no longer be the Uber developer because I'm the integrator, um, uh, they, they left. Um, and good luck to them. It takes all sorts. Um, yeah, investment in software testing. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it costs. It absolutely costs. And it doesn't deliver something. It's amorphous. It's quality. Yeah, absolutely vital. Um, for us, artifact management is the next challenge. Um, we have so many different components in uh, software generating. And, yeah. So, there we go. It really is lunch now. It's a very good question. Um, we uh, tell her off the fact we're going to be a retiring system by launching a new one. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of our key things is we support these products for longer than we should do, <laughs> to be honest, um, because of the... Um, but it's important. If someone buys something for their boat, they're going to have that for 20, 30 years until they retire, they get a divorce, or they sink it. Um, <laughs> so. It's, it's important you do support them, you know. Um, how, do you keep, um, how do you make sure that you can still build software for those old systems? Because you've probably got tool chains that run on uh, Windows NT. Nowadays, it'll be easy because Docker solves everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> then we have a collection of lovely PCs. Uh, I've imaged all the drives onto SSD. And um, yeah, we, we built stuff on, uh, on um, <coughs> Windows, which we have some old, old tools, but we also have stuff on running on, uh, building on Fedora 8. Um, when was that? That was, uh, yeah, that was, I'm sure that was last year, wasn't it? No. Um, so yeah, we have instances of old machines. We do have some fantastic old bits of kit, which run test and simulation software, which is written by people Early 90s would be nice, to be honest, uh, no, earlier than that, actually, which uh, we now run in a, a simulated VM, which spits out uh, data streams. But yeah, it, it, it is an issue, um, and it is a commercial one. It's a commercial one. How long do you support your stuff for? But yeah, we support back over two generations of, of platform uh, for customers. But that's, that, that's one of the things why people buy our kit. So it's not Samsung. So. Any other questions for Kevin before we wrap up the morning session? No? Okay, well thanks Kevin. Thank you.